With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Good afternoon to you and a happy Africa Day. My name is Anne Doda and welcome to Real Talk right here on SABC3. So keeping a relationship together is tough, even more so when you're in the public eye. My guests today know this all too well, having lived out a lot of their ups and downs right in front of our eyes, which is one of the reasons they're considered one of South Africa's favorite power couples. Kicking off our chat is the man who has over for the past 20 years become one of South Africa's most recognizable voices behind the <laughs> microphone. His love for music has seen him produce no less than six albums and together with his contagious love he brings you the best tea in the city please welcome Tabo Tibo Smukwele yeah. Oh, play, right? uh, yeah okay <laughs> this must be so awkward for you because you always interviewing people listen to be sitting on the other side is like what 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 do I do? Eh? What do I do? Because you've bought the cards, I don't have them, and I'm like, mm. I wonder. Eh? I wonder huh? because I think you have a card up your sleeve somewhere. Me? You are Anele. <laughs> 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 But it's so good to be here. I'm thank you. so glad you can come here. No, and thank I, you for inviting me. You, yes, and well, well done, well done. I mean, huh? eh? it who thought? So, eh? It was so funny. You and I were chatting downstairs, and you said. You know, me when I used to do breakfast at Metro, but by, by four o'clock in the afternoon, I was sleeping. No, no, four o'clock, I'm out. Uh, I, and I think the most vivid memory of that is the 9-11. Yes. Because uh, at the time, I used to have a TV in my room. Uh. And I, four o'clock, like I said, time to sleep because I'm up at half past three. two, three. Yeah. And now I'm watching CNN just to sort of, I know what's going on. And I'm like, since, since when? Is CNN playing movies? Yeah. Because this is the time when the planes were oh, hitting you, the you towers. Like, what and, and what and trailer and is then this? I was like, why is Bruce Willis die hard <laughs> on CNN? Little did I know, come three in the morning, every newspaper mm. is talking about 9-11 attacks. Sure. And I'm thinking, is this what I was watching? Oh, wow. But because of the time of day and how early you start a day yeah. as a breakfast show host, yeah. um, little do people know that you are actually on a different time zone altogether. True. Because you start, your, like you said, you start your morning yeah. at three. And by when it's lunchtime for people, it's actually dinner. This is true. Somebody was saying to me, oh, did you watch uh, Karabo's mom on Checkpoint? I was like, what time is Checkpoint? They're like, half yeah. past nine. I'm like, oh, what, guys? Oh, oh, uh, no. Oh, bah, no, bah. No, 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 no. Me, I'm sleeping by that time. I'm still surprised that you're still awake <laughs> and this fresh at this time. I have a clone. Oh, I have oh, a clone. Okay. But I mean, 20 years in the game. Yeah. You know, just over 20 years. Besides money, you know, yes, we get remunerated, but you have to find your thing that keeps you in it. What is that? The first thing first was that radio was that connectivity or that social network platform. That was the first social network? That's the first social network yeah. because it made you wish to hear what other people were going mm. through, wherever they may be. I mean, the radio host could ask a question, what did, what did you have for breakfast? And that was enough mm. to get everybody calling in and sharing their you know, bread and peanut butter story. Yeah. You know? But for me, it was like, I mean, I'm a chemical engineer by training, mm. right? And, but I was like, there's no way I'm going to be a technician. But I know my love for music and my love to connect with people. Yeah. It has to find a way. And thank God for radio. Wait, I'm stuck on chemical engineer. So when are you can make beer? And other things. Okay. As long as there's a chemical that one must uh, act with the other to make things happen. Listen. So, Vela, you're making your wife's skin products because her skin is not like our skin. Tina, we struggle. <laughs> that one's skin. <laughs> I, and, I, and, I, and I've asked her this before with skin. And yeah. she was just like, ah, oh, well. You must, must choose them well. Oh, oh, okay. okay, all right. All right. <laughs> so, what made you not go the, the path then of chemical engineering? I uh, know, honestly speaking, I must say that I found it to be mundane. Um, um, and the very, the very month I went for auditions on YFM mm. is the very month I got an offer to be a technician at that particular uh, uh, chemical company. Mm. I declined it. And then Did you decline it before you went to the auditions? Um, 
Yeah. No, no, no. I went for the auditions oh. and YFM put an offer on the table. And at the same time, I had this offer from uh, from the chemical uh, company. Mm. Uh, the chemical company was four times Ooh. what YFM was offering. Oh. <laughs> Imagine going to your parent, Mama, I'm not going to the chemical uh, plant. I'm going to the radio station. And that's what I did. So and she was shocked. She was like, okay, you go for it. What, did she immediately say go for it or did she have to be convinced? She had to be convinced. All right. Now, as my a, dad said go for it. Okay. Because men are a lot riskier than women. Yeah. I, I so that. my dad says, I, I, listen, I've invested. I've given you, he, in fact, this is how he put it. He yeah. said, I have given you the wealth that no one can take away from you. Which is meaning education. education. Yeah. So I think you're men enough now to fend for yourself. So good luck. Go ahead. And he gave me a handshake and a hug. Done. Mom was like, are you sure of what you're doing? And, and uh, you know, as moms will be. Yo, Marangwana kubatla ba DJ. And it's like, ready yo. Ready yo tabo, ready yo. I was like, yep. How do you even make money? How do you even make money? You know what I mean? Um, so I had to even teach her about how we make money because I was doing a weekend show, but Monday to Friday, I was on the direct sales team. Uh, oh, wow. To supplement the income. Okay. So I had to learn about the workings of radio, even the business side of radio during that. So sometimes I will even go at home because I was already a pensioner. Yeah. I'll go at home mid uh, midday, find her there. And she'll be like, what are you doing here? You're not at work. I are said, you fired? I am at work, <laughs> relax. Uh -huh. And this is what I'm doing. So a lot of teaching. And later on, she started realizing and seeing the passion and how happy I was. And she also started reaping the benefits of, of a, a grocer in J out of uh, mid month. And also when the Manhattans come to town, Who's got tickets? Thank you. Mm -mm. Thank you. Thanks Done. for coming. Done. <laughs> but something in your personality, ne? Yeah. Had to have been apparent to both your parents whilst you were growing up that made them feel comfortable with the fact that you wanted to be on radio. When I was in Standard 7, mm. which is what, grade 9, I was part of a dance group. Music was in the center of everything I did. Mm. Um, we had a space gram. I was there. Right. And for you to play the LPs, you need to open it up and so that you can play the LPs. Uh -huh. Luckily, we had electricity, so plugged in and all of that. But here's the challenge. The very space gram was the TV stand. Okay, so you had to move the TV off and put it on the floor. At the time, I'm skinny bones. I can't even pick up this thing. So every time we fought about, okay, I need my own radio. I need my own system. Oh. I want to listen to the music. And every time I'll get into trouble with them because I'll go out and borrow. Oh, and, and bring, parents hate it when you they borrow hate things. It, yeah. Yeah. And then you bring it home and you're making all this noise. And soon, I think they, they realized that so that there's something about music and this boy. One yeah. of the vivid memories I have, uh, Michael Jackson and Diana Ross had a concert. <laughs> Uh, back in the day, yeah, um, where I, I can't even remember what it was, but they started singing the Richard and Touch song. Richard and, and Touch, somebody's, somebody's hand, hand. Yeah. make it a better day. They started crying together. I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you were? In, oh, you were crying as well. Because <laughs> Michael Jackson was always crying. <laughs> Listen, I was in there, uh. and my mom. I remember she stood there looking down on me and going, "Tabo, you are gonna." You're going to basically make yourself sick through this music, you know? But I think she got it because she was a yeah. music collector. Actually, my mom had more L collected more LPs than my dad. Oh, wow. So she, she knew where this love for music came from. You just reminded me of something. Mm. That song, wasn't that Felicia Mabuza's theme song? Oh, well, Felicia could have taken anything and made it her theme song. <laughs> but I get it. African Dream was also her theme yes. song. Yes. Yeah, but it, it was. It was her theme song. Oh. But it was such a powerful song. It was indeed. Yeah. But actually, it's an Ashford and Simpson song. But other oh, people, obviously, ev everyone also sang it. Speaking of powerful, I understand your grandmother is also like got a lot to do with who you are. Oh uh, no, most definitely. Um, I, I sometimes I, I quiz uh, my wife, and I'm like, she set the benchmark, darling. Oh. Yes, because she will wake me up for in the morning before she goes to work, so that I can have breakfast in bed. <laughs> so. <laughs> Because my same is in my kitchen. <laughs> One in the morning, yeah. wake up my boy, tray, eat. She didn't trust anyone with me. She didn't trust that they will feed me the way she does. Okay. Yeah. So my what I knew of matriarch or maternal warmth yeah. and yeah. love came through this woman 
uh, Sabina uh, Musia. But you know what I like? Because you said she used to work in the kitchens, right? Mm. Because there's always that notion that uh, a lot of us, our mothers grew up and our, and our grandmothers grew up yeah. being yeah. helpers, you know? Yes. Yeah. And, and it was, there's always like a certain bitterness. It's like, you know, she's, she, she spent her entire life raising somebody else's kids and mm. not me. Yeah. But yeah. so what I like about what you're saying about your grandmother is that she made sure that she fed her children yes. before she had to go feed somebody else's exactly. children. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I think it's very telling. And, and that's yeah. why you're such a warm person. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. That's your grandmother. Listen, <laughs> how awesome is this chat? It is about to get better. Real Talk with Anel is back after the break. And welcome back to Real Talk with me, Anel Mdoda, on Africa Day. So a little later in the show, we'll be joined by his missus, the outspoken, lovely, intelligent, beautiful Mapasika Mukwili to talk relationships amongst many other things that they're up to. But before that, I'm spending a little more time with her hubby, Tabo Thibos Mukwili, my mom's best friend, spent six years in Paris, ne? Yeah. And... She, we're like, don't you miss home? She's like, I'm not going to miss home. She's like, I'm not going to miss home. She's like, I'm not going But now she's back. And she's oh like, word, yeah. oh, my data is fine. Yeah. Yes. Now, now I'm here and I can get him properly. So she's watching and she's yes. tickled right uh, now. No, hello. She's watching and she's tickled. <laughs> Anolita, this is for you. So why did you only spend one year at YFM? Uh, because Romeo Kumalo saw the talent and said, come hither. Ah, yeah. Romeo, Romeo. And, and remember at the time, um, we are new blood mm. and we are entering a movement True. called YFM. Yeah. And at the time, we're trying to prove that, you know what, the big stations um, have let go of great talent because we've been sending demos because I was, I was on campus radio for three years. Is this at TUT? At TUT. Yes. And I was also, myself, Greg Maloka. And Ashifa Shaba. Ashifa Shaba. Yeah. Uh, we, um, and even AK. Uh, AK was also part of that team. Uh -huh. um, we actually turned that campus radio station into a community radio station. Oh, wow. It's still standing to this still, day. And it's still churning out talent? Yes, it's still yeah. churning out talent. And, and it's one of those things that we always wanted, obviously, to play in the professional league. The commercial league yeah. was the place to be. So going to YFM for auditions and being picked out of 300 plus people. Wow. And it was we were only 22, yeah. that really, 25 actually, that made it and it was cut down to 15. And I was part of that with Bofresh. I mean, the it, those, Fejo, the, I mean, the, the heyday, the, 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 the cream, heyday. the cream. Root boy Paul, root boy Paul. bad boy T. Listen. What are you doing? <laughs> Lee Kasumba, what do you listen, mean? Listen, listen. Uh, I mean, this is the cream. And even then you still need that validation yeah. that you are on the right track. Because remember, it's a risk I took. Mm. Somebody, can the universe, can God, can somebody just validate that I'm on the right track? Mm. And that one particular day came and Romeo Kumal was on the other side. And it says, like, this is Romeo Kumal. You know how he mentioned it. This is Romeo <laughs> Kumal. <It's> like, <laughs> the romantic repertoire. <laughs> uh, this t boss. I said, yes, we need to speak. I was like, okay. And then obviously, uh, the rest is history. So you go to Metro. Now, what I know about the old school radio talents, yes. and this is why you're still in radio, is that you guys crit yourselves a lot and you yeah. listen to your air checks. Yes. And you, 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 you are broadcasters. You're yeah. not radio DJs. Yeah. You're broadcasters. Yeah. So if you had to listen to yourself back then and listen to yourself now. I will die. <laughs> <laughs> there, I said it. I will die. Oh, I will die. I will what die. What was wrong? I cringe to this very day. <laughs> Really? Because one of the trainings, I think, I think they trained us like the MI6 or the CIA. You must never be happy with your work. Because should you be happy, immediately you get Damn. into your comfort zone. Mm. Um, uh, and so many others, so many of us, to this day, then, where even when we meet, we critique each other. Yeah. I was listening to you, and I think that link could have done it better. Oh, wow. Because that was the, that was the camaraderie at, at, at YFM. And you know it's never coming from a bad place. No, 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 it's not coming from... Yeah. It, because it's, it's good constructive criticism is coming from a great place. Uh. Whether you are a bad broadcaster in my book, but your feedback is... Because you are a listener. You're a listener. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. to this very day, um, even when my listeners tell me, I like this, I didn't like that. Uh, and now with social media, actually. It's, uh, it's instant. It's, it's instant. Mm. So I'm Im immediately. Uh, and most of them, they, get, they even get surprised that I don't take offense. Oh. Yeah, no, T, this, I don't like that song, or I don't like what you say. And I'm like, okay, I apologize, but this is the context. Okay. You, know, you know what I mean? Okay. So that okay. engagement, because for me, listener is king. You yeah. know? And it's, that, that was the training. 
And to this very day, it is still the, the hallmark of what radio is about. What, what's better about radio today? Because you, you know what it is. When we get to a place where we are, you know, the stalwarts and the legends, you're like, ah, oh, it's not the same anymore, man. Back in my day. No, 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 no. Um, I want someone who's been in it as long as you, who's still in it, to say, yeah. uh, right now, it's a, this, this part of what we do is a lot better than it was 20 years ago. If there's one medium that is forever relevant, is radio. Oh. Every other media around it tries to be relevant. True. Radio is instant, is now it's relevant. Now, what has radio... In fact, what, what my worry is, radio today <clears throat> is trying to be digital. When digital is trying to be radio, radio. where you are listening, mm. not actively, but passively, yet attentive. Mm -hmm. And that's what radio, it gives you that power. Mm. And I think that's the part I think I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit worried about, you know, programmers now. They're trying so much to be digital. To be digital. And it's almost forcing it. Yes. Yeah. So you, you might end up just messing up the very formula of why radio exists to this very day. Mm. And radio is that friend, it is that companion, regardless of where you are. Yeah. Um, it gives, it's the, like you said earlier on, and I like how you put it, is the original social network. Yeah. And should we miss that and try to be a social network? Oh, there you go. Ping. What we need to do, and which is some of the radio stations are doing very well, even radio personalities, mm. they're using those platforms. To extend. To feed into. Yes. So basically pull in. Yeah. On come, don't forget, this still is the this, primary. This is the this yeah. is the flagship store. Yes. This is the head office. Come back to the roots. Mm. And that's where it starts. And now it starts feeding other things. Which is I think I think that's radio will forever be relevant as long as we just maintain the formula. But one thing that's been <clears throat> excuse me, tried, tested, failed, flopped until you did it, is the radio show that's a TV show. The fly on the wall. Now I want to know, Yeah. how did you do that? Because you know, Mark Gilman tried it, it didn't work. Thank you. Gareth Cliff tried it, it didn't work. Even Smooth, DJ Smooth. Smooth tried it. Yeah. Um, I, I know uh, MTV, I tried it with the Fanta Pine yes. cut chart countdown yes. with Nicole yes. Fox. Yes. It's been tried. Yeah. And you know, even it's, sometimes they're your friends and you just watch, you're like, mm, yeah. mm, mm. This is not the, the one. You see, you, the, here's the problem. Radio, like I said, is not active. TV is active. Yeah. For you to enjoy TV, you must sit actively and watch it. Uh -huh. This is Anneli, right? On radio, when I have Anneli on the show, you wish to see Anneli. Yes, yes. So let me beam that hour and take it on TV. The other parts are not necessarily for TV. It's the theater of the mind. But the minute I have a guest, yeah. the way we, you know, the rapport, the way we laugh, and maybe even if there's a tear, you wish you could see all of that. Because I used to listen to it and then go watch it. <laughs> Thank you. And yeah. then I'm just like, what are you doing? You've, you've, you yeah. know what's going to happen. Yeah. And you know it was also nominated for a SAFTA, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. And whose brainchild was that? The brainchild was between uh, Don't Look Down Records. Okay. Uh, 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 production, production company. Production yeah. company. Yeah. And, of course, and, and of course, uh, Greg Maloka, our MD. Uh -huh. um, they came and said, T, what do you think? We think this thing is translatable. I was like, you, what do you mean? It is translatable. And then Don't Look Down, I was like, okay, can we start? I was like, this Friday. And then that's all we did. Two cameras, one facing me, one facing the guest, and the music must be translated into videos. Done. Let's do this. And actually, that was the first time radio was done digitally, properly in South Africa because he's that guy. Listen, a reminder is that tomorrow is the last time that you can win. You remember that 5,000 Rand e-gift card that we give away every Friday? Yep, you want to enter, hit our social media pages to find out how we'll be back after this with the missus. And if you just joined us, we've been chatting it up with radio personality and entrepreneur Tabo Tibo Smukwili. Now I am willing to put money on the fact that if you ask Tabo, who his best friend, in Pinchi, a high confidant, and the person he shares his secrets with is, he'd say, it's my beautiful wife, Mapasika. She joins us now. Hello, Pasi. Hello, darling. You know, he said on his show that he doesn't like it when other people call you Pasi. He did say. He, he tells me all the time. <laughs> he's like, it's like, it's yeah. my name for he her. He all jealous. So yeah. wh what must we do now? What must we call What's it? What's her name? Mapastik. Thank Mapasek, you. I told you. No, but 
Mapaseka. There we go. No, but you taught me. Because I used to say Mapaseka and you said, you know, no, it's Mapaseka. you always said Mapaseka. Really? She's yeah. Tosa. She's Tosa. We'll no, forgive her. Uh, no, don't forgive me. I must say your name right. Ki Africa Day. Damn it. Oh, yes. I mean, Damn it. Oh, do you know why? Because mm. also you taught me how to say your guys' surname properly. Because yeah. I was like, Mukwele. And, and you're I like, oh, what? Don't mess with my cows also. Ki Hello. Yes, please. Ki Mukwele. Yeah. So, and part, yes. part, part of that intro, the only part you forgot to mention mm -hmm. is that if you ask me who's my biggest fan in the world, biggest fan in the world, is this girl here. <laughs> oh, do you listen to all of his shows? Of listen I do. Every day, without of fail, unless, of course, she's uh, outside the country. Obviously. And then she will call and say, what happened? How did it go? Do you do stuff on air that only you two know that you, you are now talking to her? Yes, and then I text, and I'm like, hi, hi, hi. Really? Pen. But you and must subtweet like, on air. Yeah, you know? <laughs> So y'all are sending each other filthy messages during the people. During. And we don't know nothing about it. Yes. Of course, that's what makes it fun. And he goes on air laughing and nobody knows why he's laughing. And guys that laugh of his <laughs> You know what I mean? And you're like, hmm. Yeah. I'm like, hmm, I'm watching you. When I listen now on, I'm going to know, right? How easy is it though to be with somebody who's doing the very same thing that you're doing? I'm not with somebody who does the same thing that I do. He's my colleague at work. At home, he's just my husband. Okay. So We separate the two so well. How though? And the, I think I think the time difference also makes it quite easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we also had fun when I also had her on my show. She sometimes, uh, you know, invites me on hers. Yeah. And that's when it gets a little bit, you know. Then we get a bit confused. I mean, like, who's this? Who's that? But who's that? Yeah. But under normal circumstances, Tibos works at KFM. Uh. Tabo is married to Mapaseka. Okay. Different people. I think I think that's how um, we managed to to balance that. Yeah. You know. Um, so wait. Because Cafe M, y'all are always going away. I don't know what kind of travel budget you guys have. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Every time I look, you're on Victoria Falls, then you're on Kilimanjaro, you, you, you then you're in Paris. Come I'm just us. like, come join us. Just like, come join what's us. going on here? Thank you. You guys must be running out of passport space. Lots yeah. of fun. So when that happens and they book rooms. Do you know it's the funniest thing? Yeah. Because we always, we always say, if you're booking us together and we're traveling together, don't brief him and expect him to brief me. Brief us separately. Yes. We have different contracts at work. Yeah. And then the last time, the last trip, he pulled a stunt on them. He says to them, uh, guys, but I need my own room. And they were like, but, but, but. And after a while, we're like, no, don't worry. We're just, just joking. Just teasing. Yeah. But yeah, when they book us there, okay. then it's one room free. Yeah, take, take the package, uh. the room rate, and instead of doubling it, yeah. make it one and a half and get a better <laughs> room. Okay, presidential. Because listen, you're getting How? benefits here. Oh, you see? You know? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so radio is where you guys work together, but I understand that because you kind of told us the last time you were here. You were a repeat offender, by the way. Hey. Yes, yes. Hey. Oh, yes, I remember that show. Yeah. I watched it. Of course you yeah. watched it. You, you, guys, you guys felt like you needed more time. Of course I know. we did. It was like a, I wanted, do you know what I, I wanted? I watched it as well, and then I was like, next time, it's just me and you. We must get pajamas and we must do it in bed. I love that. Right? And ice cream. You're not invited. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Your no, mind no. went somewhere. But, but remember. That's why I kind of had to <laughs> restrain like, it. So I come back to me. Like God sometimes just lends manna. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, don't even. Don't even. <laughs> you guys met around radio, right? Yeah. I know. At work. At work. Tell metro. us. You metro. tell us. She's told us. You tell us. Not Metro. Um, and and tell the truth. Tell the truth, not your virgin, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. You see, you see when they say uh, the, the wife is the neck. Yeah. You can be the head, but <laughs> where is the head tending with yes, the neck? No, no, no. I mean, um, here is this girl um, passing by. Uh, she's working at Newsbreak. Uh. And what a stunner she is. Oh, man. But my first time seeing her, we were at uh, the now Nelson Mandela Square. Mm. And I'm sitting there with my radio mentor, uh, mm. Ben Dikobi, because I just joined Metro. Yeah. And I see her, she's walking uh, in with her friend, Vasitana Kumar. And I'm like, the first thing, by the way, that caught my eye was her legs. And yeah, no. I was like, who is that? And I say it loud, and Ben, you know, pinches me. He's like, come on, don't, you can't say, because I'm, that, I'm like that, yeah. open. So he's like, okay, that's Mapasaka Makut. 
I'm like, the mapasaka makuti, as in Miss what what Miss what what. Uh, mm -hmm. At the time, mm -hmm. at the time you just uh, mm -hmm. did the, you just emceed, I think Miss Soweto. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, with she, Yes, you were you were in the with the news, and she was wearing, uh, she was on the newspaper. She was mm -hmm. wearing a dress, a J, a J Lo like dress. Very revealing. Very revealing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Sexy number, baby. Oh, so yeah. Way. And I was like, and she was on the phone, and I was like, okay, can this kind of conversation finish? She, we ended up leaving. She was still on the phone. In, next I to us. going to them. Yeah, no, oh. she was not coming to us, obviously. Oh, okay. But, I, you know, obviously, I wanted to get her attention and stuff. Yeah. And I get to work, and I'm told she's aloof and all of this. You know how uh, it will get. And now, as we're sitting as boys, obviously, boys start saying, but, you know, that's my Paseka. Whoever gets my Paseka is the king. And I'm like, quiet. Ben already knew. That you were. Um, you know, and Ben immediately announced it and said, Guys, there's only one guy who's gonna get Mapa Seca here. It's this guy. So you guys must just forget it. They're like, ah, they whatever. Six months into dating, uh -uh. they didn't know that, that we you guys were, were dating. Oh, that no, we, were we didn't date for six months. No, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Six oh, months. when we got married, yes, you're right. Yes, because okay. before before we got married, we needed to announce to our colleagues. Okay. That guys, uh, by the way. Uh, this is we, me. Yeah. No yeah. Passes, C1. Yes. yes. Same yes. WhatsApp group. <laughs> Same WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So that's when they knew. They found out. And then they, they confirmed. Oh, Ben. Is that Ben? I said, I told I you. I told you guys. I told you, yeah. But, so now, but when you finally get to approach her, what's the reception? Because, I mean, obviously you saw at the restaurant she was on the phone and mm -hmm. rightfully so. No, mm. no, no. I mean, I had to bring out the baby stroke Tembisa boy in me. Okay. Um, she was standing uh, with a, a radio colleague. Mm. And I think the radio colleague guy was trying to chat her and trying to date her. And I, I immediately, I just walked right in between them. <laughs> he was like so get Rude. No, no, I went Tembisa style. So he I went, went right in the middle. This guy was here. So he I, was I came here. I sandwiched. And you know what he said to me? Your number, please. And she was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's my girl right there. I'm like, wow. dude, cheers, bye. So, when he leaves, what does dude say to you? Manje. Like, oh, oh, I'm, manje. Me I'm like, ah, dude, you're still going to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you guys get married. Yeah. And, and, and then you are that couple. You guys, do you consider yourselves a power couple? Do you, because mm -hmm. you know it's a thing that people say, and you're just yeah, like, I don't get it. People wake up, the power couple, baby. No, no I don't get it. I don't get no. it. We, like I said, we are ordinary tab and mapa seka. Obviously, um, we are in the public uh, domain purely because of what we do. Mm -hmm. But you should see our space, and even our friends will tell you we are the most. The most private people ever. Not even we, just private, we, we just the normal, just simple normal, very yeah. guys. Um, I mean, if we are not working, we are at home. Chilling. Yeah. In onesies. Yeah. In onesies. Yeah. Does he have a onesie? Yeah. Yes, I do have a size. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was thinking. I'm like, where is this place that sells giant onesies? More well, with Tabo and Mapa Saga after the break. You should have heard the judgment we had from my mother in law. <laughs> She's like, it's like what? onesies? <laughs> no, guys. No, no, no. We took it further. We used our onesies. Were we, were we going to New York? Oh, no, we're going to New York, yeah. You wore onesies on a plane? Yes. <sighs> My mother almost killed us. No, no, she wanted to Shame. mad us. But don't worry, Ma, we've changed. I'm going to a break because I need to digest this. Listen, <laughs> a, a heads up for you. Next week, we're going to be joined by media personality and businesswoman Kanyimbao. If you'd like to ask her one question, what would it be? Luckily for you, I know someone who knows someone who works at Real Talk with Anele, and they're going to give you an opportunity to voice not ask your question. 72 to ask Kanyimbao anything you'd like to know from her, and we'll get her to answer those questions live. That number once again, 72 We'll be right back while I try to decipher why people are wearing onesies on planes. <laughs> And welcome back to Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours today. We have been granted VIP access into the lives of Tabo and Mapasega Mukwili. We've been hearing about the ups, the downs, and uh, everything they've gone through. And obviously, this is why we consider them to, one of our, to be one of our favorite couples in the industry. Yesterday on your show, you were yes. talking femicide, right? Not yesterday, uh, the day before. We're talking men are, men are trash on Tuesday. Oh. Yes, men are just trash. Hashtag men are trash, yeah. Okay. We were I'll actually just asking about that hashtag itself. Yeah. How do men relate to it are they getting the point are they offended by it what does it mean what's your stance 
My, my stance is I think we are focusing on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that the label is stirring emotions, the hashtag itself. Mm. Because it's not the, the hashtag that we should be focusing on, it's the emotion that brought the hashtag. Uh -huh. I think that's where the key issue is. And for those who will then perpetuate and keep on, you know, using the men at trash label, mm. even in situations that are out of context, then they are also missing the point. Mm. The point here is, as men, I'll give you a simple example. Yeah. And this is the example I stand by. I'm 43. I have, my peers are also within that age group. Yes. The minute we're sitting like this or at a club or anywhere we go, mm. or even at the Shisanyama, mm. the minute, and I have a 20-year-old daughter, the minute one of my friends come with a 20-year-old sitting on the same table as a handbag yeah. and sort of conquest trying to celebrate it around me, I am trash until I call him out. True. That's the essence of what it's trying to mm. say. To say, we will always have that hashtag hanging over our heads until such time that we call out our, the very same man that we live with, trashy. So, in, in the, you know, just in the space where we are right now as a country. So I know guys have WhatsApp groups where they're, they're together and you guys are chatting and you guys are sharing whatever you're sharing with each mm. other. Mm. Are you guys discussing it there, this whole thing? Just of like, course. ah, my gents, what's going on? Of course, because one of the things were, uh, that, that really came out, especially even with, with boys just talking, is what kind of man raises his hand? Uh, uh. Let's just start there. I mean... One of the best things that we know, and, and I, think, I think it was uh, St. James or St. Peter, mm. who said, um, you're not a man until you have conquered yourself. Conquered yourself. Wow. Conquered yourself, meaning know yourself. Control yourself. Control yourself. You. I know between the two of us, if there's one person who knows how to communicate her emotions, it's her. Uh -huh. I have to learn to communicate my emotions. But my frustration doesn't necessarily mean, therefore, I must act it out. Ah. Rather walk away. And her seeing me walk away, because she can also read the action. Later on, because I'm a little bit calmer, mm -hmm. I'll be able to say, I didn't like one, two, three. Much calmer. Mm. Rather walk away. Because then you're going to act out the emotion, and at the time, you are drunk from the emotion. What happens when you sober up? And there's things that were said and done that you can never take Thank back. Thank you very much. And in yeah. words, you'll never take back. And they hurt. All right, so uh, we have a WhatsApp line, and uh, the, uh, the viewers have been sending in some stuff. Let's hear the first one, please. I'll say. Hello, my name is Max um, from Carlsonville. I just wanted to comment on the matter. This is a very serious matter. Our sisters are living in fear. They, they traumatized. They don't know where to live anymore. I think yeah. that sentence should be brought back. What do you feel about that, Napasiga? I agree, you know, and it's sad. It's, I find it so sad that we've gotten to a point where we've had to agree with that. But I think he's, he's spot on in a sense that, you know, we need to be able to deter a person who does that mm. in such a way that they know. It's not enough to say, you'll go to jail, yeah, well, I'll go and come back. I mean, you've heard, I've heard of men saying to somebody, I will kill you and go to jail for you. I'll be out soon. Do you understand? It's uh -huh. gotten that bad when somebody thinks jail is not a bad thing. So that is not a deterrent anymore. So we need to find a deterrent because it's bad. Yeah. It is bad. I was saying the other day that Bali, Bali is a 20 year old. Bali yeah. sent an SMS to me with her IMEI number. Yeah, after the police minister uh, said we must try and must do, do that. Yeah. Yeah. She sent that to me and she's, she's at Varsity. She's doing a third year at UCT. And she sent me this and she says, Ma, I just thought you should have this. It's not safe where I am. Um, I'm, I am on campus, but you know, things are yeah. bad. I was so saddened by that message. Cause I, and I said to T, this is supposed to be the best time of her life. Oh, yes. The freedom, yes. the, the best time of her life. Yeah. And guess what? At that time. She's living in fear. She's living in fear. So. As a woman, I knock off at 8 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. What happens? I drive home. As I'm standing at the robot in my car, minding my own business, the minute I see somebody walking towards me, I'm scared. Yeah. I panic. Yeah. Your default setting is war yes. warfare. It's I warfare. Mean, it's yeah. gotten so bad now that even getting inside an Uber, you look, look at the guy. Boots. I mean, I look mm. at the driver, look at the picture, look at him again, check his number plate. Please, can I see your boot? By the time you get in there, you're already like, Mm. And once, if he says there's traffic here, can we go that way? No, you like, no, no, can't. No, no, no. Why are you changing Stick, routes? Yeah. Because you're panicked. I don't want to live like that. You're living in fear. You're not free. This is it. I wouldn't want my kids to live like that. And so we can never smile, guys. We can never sleep at night until the next person is free. 
my, my, you know, my dad always says, I'm only as happy as my unhappiest child. And mm. he's oh, got so four true. girls. Four girls? Four girls, guys. Okay, I mean, it's the same mentality with the, uh, the chain, um, you know, sort of <clears throat> usage that we say, you know, you're the strongest, the, uh, the weakest link. Yeah. <clears throat> it's true. Mm. It is true. And, and now one of the biggest problems is that the village is gone. Oh. The village is no longer raising the child. Mm. You're on your own. The that walls. Is such a true statement. The mm. walls are separating us from our people. You're on your own. You don't even know who your neighbor is. Now, your child is in trouble and the neighbor hears in something. They look out the window. And like, they don't think of calling the cops. They don't think of helping. It's not their problem. Because what if I help? Am I going to be manza? Mm. Am I going to be shot because mm. I was helping someone? Yes. Do you yeah. understand? So yeah. if I help, am I going to die for it? If I say anything, am I going to be called impimpi of sorts? We've yeah. gone back to that. We've gone back to the I know, bad. for me, I, I, and it's so funny because when it comes to like the death sentence, when Jessica Mutawong was in South Africa, they asked about the death sentence. And back then she was like, you know what? We need to reconsider it because there are heinous crimes that are happening. And this was in 1993, yes. 1994, guys. Yeah. Think about it. And I was like, no, because the wrong people get killed and mm -hmm. it's always going to be black men mm -hmm. getting killed. No, no. And now I'm just like, how, okay, guys, it's the same men who are killing us now. What must this happen? Is it. Exactly. This is it. Yeah. And I mean, how many? How many women have we seen being killed? You know, and, and somebody said to me, yeah, you, know, you guys are pe uh, performing just because social media has gone wild now. Mm. And I'm like, but hold on, one death is one too many. Mm -hmm. One is one too many. Listen, as a society, you have failed if you are unable to, to provide, and pro and, and provi uh, provide and protect the vulnerable. Mm. You have failed as a society. So forget you and I, yeah. forget our privileges, forget everything else. But look at it in totality. Because the minute you start living only for yourself, the society or the community, the fabric yeah. collapses. But the minute you start looking at it in total, in total, yeah. because the very son you are raising is going where? Into the very same society. Yes. So um, the, the lack of balance, the lack of seeing things for what they are mm. and being honest and truthful about it is the very fact that that's why we're going to you know, kill the, the social fabric. Hence, I'm saying that the minute we make her feel weak, mm. Mm. the minute we, f we make her feel fearful, mm. the very society, and remember, we're talking about the incubator of knowledge. Mm. The woman, the first university any child attends, what is she going to teach? Fear. Fear, survival, really? rejection. Really? Mm. <laughs> okay. Look out Anger. at the robots. Okay. Anger. Our yeah. woman. We've got one more uh, WhatsApp message. We'll do that after the break. When we come back as well, I want to talk about these seminars that these two do. Apparently, there was one in Feb. There's another one coming up this weekend. Ribato, so we need to attend. We'll talk about that after the break. <laughs> All right, so we've only got a few minutes left, so we need to hustle here. Tabo and Mapasika Mokwele in the hot seat. We're going to talk about their new venture, which involves a couple seminars called You For Me. Right now, why you for... Oh, oh, hey, yeah. why you for me? There we go, there we go. Ah. Oh, for a moon for a moon Why, you guys are silly. Okay, before we get Jovia, let's be serious one last time. Can we get the last WhatsApp voice note? Malas is an L. Ika Malam Jing San Siwam Langjin in the Sala E. Tolopini Ebizo on the Dal Stress A. Free State. So, my question is that what can you do if you're a disadvantaged girl? What can you do to like protect yourself if you can't afford things like pepper spray? And would you guys be able to start an organization, a non profit organization for girls who are still in school, can't afford such things like? pepper sprays and all. So thank you. Hey, that's sad. You see now. Yeah. You're supposed to be concentrating on whether you're going to do higher grade maths or standard thank grade you. maths. But you remember, there was a problem when women had to stay at home because they were on their period. Yes. So it started there. Yeah. Whether the girl child would miss out on school days because she's on her period. Yeah. Now she misses out on school days because of her period. Or fear. And because of fear. So sad that. So what about the pepper spray thing? Like, is, 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 is it something we advocate? Yes, because what must happen? Yes, definitely. But anything, I'm not sure I, th I, th I, think, I think, I think more than anything, um, it's a societal issue. Mm. Uh. And we need to find a cohesive solution. Uh. Because to give a pepper spray, a spray without teaching the boy, you're also still s staying with the same problem because she, mm. the boy needs to be the sister's keeper. She needs to be the brother's keeper. Okay. So we need to, so we need to raise them. 
and, and I say raise them because it needs to start from there. Yeah. We need to raise them to understand that one, that violence is wrong, mm. but two, to protect mm. themselves and those around them. So you're raising a child who, you know, you're, you're turning around, you're making it different. Mm. So you're getting a child who comes, when your kids fight, say mm. you've got a pigeon pair mm. and they're fighting and you get your little boy, uh, your little girl coming crying, mommy, but he's fighting with me. You go and say, but Nana, you need to protect. Mm. But similarly, Mm. You do the same with the girl. With the girl so they yeah. need to know that they, they actually are equal and loving each other yeah. on the same level. So you're not teaching one the other. You know, now I think what we've, what we've been doing wrong is we've been saying to the girl child, remember, you can be independent. You can stand on your own. You don't need but a we man. we've been building mm. the boy child in, on the same regard mm. that it's okay that you are, if you are not exactly. the, the breadwinner, the powerful one, the so strong one. what we've said to the boy child is you must be the man. But you're telling the girl, you must stand on your own. These people get married and they don't know how to This have is where I'm going now. Mm. These seminars, why yeah. are you for me? Why are yes. you for me? What are you guys, because I mean, like I said, when it comes to couples that we look up to, because you guys have been through it all, you guys were married, you guys split up, you guys got back together and you're making it work. Mm -hmm. And also you owned your problems. You know, you weren't like, no, it's a private matter. Can you please leave us alone? Do you know what I'm saying? You were like, no, this is, this is what goes down. I missed him. He missed me. This is the bottom line. Sure. What are we teach? What are you guys teaching us at the why? Why you for me? Sorry. Let's start there. I mean, why you for me? Uh, even the um, the name already tells you that we are saying let's take it back to basics. Mm. Because you know, um, teenage love affairs are all luxury and so on. I mean, that's what it's like. Share law, check you and all of that. Because what I like is the basics made it very easy. Look very easy. Yes. We are not teaching. And that's the misconception okay. uh, or maybe the misunderstanding yes. of what we do. You're sharing. We are radio hosts, ah. right? So what is the one thing that we do well? Facilitate. Thank you. <laughs> so now, we, and we've been getting requests for, for couple seminars. Okay. And we've been running away from them because yes. we don't want to be standing there on some, no, we are experts. We are the no, no, example no, no, no. of how no. it should look. Exactly. And we're not yes. the example of how, of how it should look. No. Mm. You know, and I don't think we ever aim to be the example. We live each day, we wake up every day and we relationship every day. Yes. Oh. So when you wake up in the morning, you are again, start relationshiping, mm -hmm. if that's a word. And you yeah. do it on a daily, every day. So what we basically are saying is, let's, take you back there. Let's facilitate that discussion that you actually cannot have together at yeah. home because it's sensitive. Because of baggages, because yeah. of other issues yeah. around it. For instance, we, 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 we ask tough questions. The last one. Yes. Like? Like, um, why did you choose her? And I must like, because I love her, but that's not enough. Yeah, and? Yeah. and? Love and? Yeah. What yeah. else is there? So, what are, you know, there's, there's something, when, when we started the seminar the last time, yeah. he got up and said to them, okay, think of the one thing that makes you so angry that your partner's done. And everybody sat down and started thinking. And then he said, okay, swap seats, go tell somebody else. And yeah. they got to tell somebody, and they're like, she does this, no, 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 she does this. No. And then he said, okay, go back, tell your partner, you've had practice now. Mm -hmm. Now you've practiced how you should be talking about it. Mm -hmm. Now tell the person that actually matters. Yeah. Because the person that needs to hear it is your partner. Mm. I can't be coming and saying, Anela, but you know, he did this, he did this, and he walks and I'm like, hello, he'll yeah. never know That's yeah. that I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. So basically, practice it and then do it. So how often do the seminars happen? Every three months. Every, Every three, three months. months. And yeah. you still can't take base for now, but you are planning on taking it around the country. Yes, yeah. definitely yeah. planning on taking it around the country. You're even planning on having a trip going overseas with some couples. Yeah, because we must end it with a party. Eh? No, on. I mean, this is who we are. Exactly. All right, I'm being told I have 30 seconds left. Oh. This is why I'm going to give it to you because she's been here. You can have it. Uh, why did you choose her? Best friend. Aww. Beautiful. Loving. She's exactly my opposite. You're not loving? Really? No, no, no. I mean in terms of characteristics and, <laughs> and personality and mm. all. So she's exactly the, the, my yang to the yin. Okay. And <clears throat> the very fact that sometimes she upsets me, but I'm able to come back to her and say, uh, okay, even apologize, for, even when I'm not wrong. That's a sign. <laughs> You know what I mean? It, that's a sign right there because that's exactly what you need. You need your opposite. Somebody who challenges you, somebody who has your best interest at heart and vice versa. And on that note, Saturday, 11 o'clock. Saturday, 11 o'clock. Bookings when? at bashumi.co.za. Bashumi. Yeah, bookings at bashumi.co.za. A few places left. Details. 
few places left saturday 11 o'clock bashumi.co.za this is where you're gonna okay. get to sit and be facilitated by this lovely couple you can also follow them on social media we've been screening their their social media pages they ask them all the questions you want to ask them there about saturday but what a pleasure it was to sit down with you guys we will do this again tomorrow at five o'clock for the last time this week bye bye